From where you sit, how should we design learning experiences that are engaging and relevant? Yeah, um, I think first, start, obviously starting with the students is the, the first thing. Um, when I think about learning experiences in my context, it ranges from the classroom to college trips to career experiences. Um, and one of my pet peeves, for example, when you do college trips, pet peeve of mine is that you, you, get a you get a group of students from a high school and you put them in a classroom or auditorium and talk to them for you know, two hours. Mm -hmm. And then you say, we're gonna do a quick 30 minute college visit. That's not engaging and it's not relevant. Um, instead, we should ask the students beforehand with the counselors or teachers and say, what do you wanna see on the college campus? And then create that experience based on what they want to see, what questions they want to ask, and then what, you know, some of the expertise from the counselors, what they should know. Yep. And I think that translates to classroom instruction as well, where we have our standards and we have what we need to teach, but are we asking them, how are you learning this, or what do you need to learn, or what are some of the gaps? Um, it also relates to, when we think about um, um, rigorous courses like AP and concurrent enrollment, one of the challenges is that we don't ask that question about what support you need, right? So kids get into the classes, they're excited about college class, but then are we giving them wraparound support to make it relevant or engage in them, um, or if we just ask them to go through the six semesters or whatnot and, and they get a grade at the very end, right? right. Um, and what that does is it, it actually creates this problem when they go to college or career afterwards, right? They don't know how to advocate, they, they haven't and it, it, it creates a, a disconnect, right? So I just talked to someone the other day about um, students on a college campus and they, they're taking classes in their SIM program. And they're like, now they're four weeks in, now they realize, oh, all the stuff you talked about early on, I need to use, right? So they, but they're engaged in the conversation. They know what support's available, so. So you think that the, the way in which you engage and, and make something relevant is by essentially asking students what they need or by providing further supports? I think it's both, right? I think it's asking what, what do you need. That helps with the self-awareness in college and being able to advocate or career later on. Like they know how to identify um, their needs and so you have to ask. Um, it's also important like when you know when you think about work and you go into life after high school you got to be able to talk to your boss about needs before it becomes an issue, right? It's the yellow before it becomes red. And I think that's the first, helping students and parents and everyone think about that. It's okay to ask and share your needs so that's where you can work around. The so other there's a lot of transparency there, right? Yeah. Like that it requires us to be transparent about what we need, what supports are available, and to have a conversation. Yeah. How do you best support students in having that conversation? Yeah. I, I think you, so it's, you best support them by, um, you give them resources, and that's the other part of that, where you help them understand what's available, like, for example, what questions should you ask, right? Mm -hmm. um, when you think about college fairs at a school, you know, you round all these students up and you put them into a cafeteria and you say, go talk to colleges. For a first time generation student, they don't know what questions to ask, so you can kind of prep them beforehand. Here's what questions to ask when you go on college visit, the same thing, give them in an even classroom, like, here's what things you should be asking, here's the syllabus, what you should be knowing, um, and here's examples when you're going to get your grades or whatnot, but give them that, that toolbox first, right? Mm. Um, and then from there, as an expert, we should know our, our school, our classroom, so we have an idea of what should be in that toolbox, right? So we help kind of develop resources tailored to our, our community. Does that answer your question? I think so. I mean, I, it, for me, the, the, the conversation space, that space where you're actually building the relationship yeah. so that that student is engaged and yeah. has that relevancy um, is, is really like the sort of the crux, right? Yeah. And so I'm interested in your thoughts around um, what the role is that is required to do that. Is it is it just having, you know, that amazing teacher who takes an interest in a kid or, or something like that? Yeah. Or is there a more formal role that we need to be playing in supporting students and knowing the questions to ask and being able to be an advocate? Do students need an ombudsman <laughs> you yeah. know, the, yeah. to help them navigate both the college and career side, but also like the system that we have created? Yeah, I think they do. I think they need a, um, 
as educators, our role is to, like I said earlier, give that, understand our student needs and begin to develop a toolbox that meets their needs. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. give them space um, in a non-judgmental way to ask questions and say, hey, I don't get this. Um, and I guess empowering them, and that's the, the other piece, is like empower our students and our families to ask, ask questions, advocate for themselves, um, and then give them structure on how to do it. So we, we have to be conscientious of how we tear that in throughout the whole year, uh, whether it's a workshop or it's discussing in the classrooms or it's helping them do a debrief after college visits, right? But we are intentional about it. I guess that's the last is maybe it's intentionality, like making mm. sure there's some intentionality about it. Because having a relationship is good, but then to what extent is this relationship helping the student, right? Is it just crisis management? <laughs> or is it like, hey, we have a relationship, but I have a plan for you throughout the whole year that you're going to, at the end of the year, be better um, person, be better student, you know, does that, yeah. Yeah. Because I ran into, yeah, like, and you run into that conversation with social-emotional needs where there's a lot of things happening with our students that need addressing early on, um, especially like in ninth grade if they go through a lot of social-emotional challenges in ninth grade. Um, but those challenges, are we equipping them to deal with these challenges throughout life, right? So are we helping them address this issue now, or is it going to have an issue? You, know, you learn how to address this issue now, but you also learn how to address it two months from now or two, three years from now. You have these skills so that it's not a reoccurring issue. Yeah, and I think that idea of like <clears throat> making things, uh, really supporting kids in learning how to navigate yeah. and, and really having those skills of, uh, of, of advocacy, of you know, being agents yeah. within their own uh, learning path. Yeah. Um, and I think that speaks a lot to the level of engagement. Like yeah. if I feel like I am an agent of my learning, I'm a lot more engaged than if I am a passive recipient of yeah. learning. Yeah. Um, and so that becomes a lot more important for me to like figure it out um, when it's when it really is on me. Yeah. And and I think that that's that's a shift for a lot of a lot of folks, right? Yeah. Versus sort of disseminating information and things like that. Yeah. So. Well, I think that's what makes it relevant for the student. Um, because a lot of in, in a lot of ways they're choosing what they want to learn and they get the opportunity to, to dive in and it's happening already outside of the classroom. So if I'm a student, I choose to go to the movie because X, Y, or Z. I choose to do this because X, Y, or Z. Um, they're they're finding meaning and making it relevant and, and they're engaging in different things outside of the school that are just like things. So how do we take that process and um, their ability to be engaged and do it in the school setting, right? Yeah. It shouldn't be separated. I hope that makes sense. It definitely does, and I think there's an element there of how do we support kids in making better choices, too, yeah. right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I can go to the movies and get into a fight, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and that's a choice that I have to, to make versus going to the movies and really enjoying, you know, my friend uh, group and, yeah. and whatever, right? So there are better choices to be making in schools, but we also have to present them as real choices rather yeah. than, like, well, you could take this math class now, or you can take this math class, you know, yeah. next semester. Right? Yeah. Like that's not a great choice necessarily, yeah. unless you see it as a part of your path. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I feel like you've tackled this question and really, really hit it. The last thing that I want to make sure that we do is ask, what is the question that you think we should be asking ourselves that we should be answering collectively? What is the question that you wrestle with and are, you know, keeps you up at night or however you want to think about that? The question is how do you build a systemic system that addresses every student's need um, while ensuring that we're all accountable for our work, but where it's individualized enough so students can be engaged, relevant, um, and ultimately live a, a, a life of, of their choice, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the question. That's a big one. I feel like, um, and I think that the sort of that element of sustainable, right? Like it's a sustainable system. It is something that does allow for a lot of choice, mm -hmm. right? But that it, it really does support every child with their needs, mm -hmm. right? And I think that if we're answering that, trying to answer that mm -hmm. together, then I think we're we're probably a lot better at creating a system than if we're just saying, well, we're all doing our own things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully it'll add up to something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a matter of when, right? It'll add up to something. Is it something that happens this year, or is that a 
a three to five year or is that a ten year turnaround? Mm -hmm. I don't know. All right. Well, I think it's a good question to be asking. Thank you so much. Thank I really you. appreciate Thank your time. You. All right.